Well, good morning, First Methodist Church. Happy Independence Day to you all, and the Lord be with you. Thank you. I caught you by surprise on that one, didn't I? But it is good to have you in worship. We know that there is a lot of people on the lake today, but we are glad that you made it here, that you came here, and uh, I think that we're all planning some sort of celebration probably after after today, but it, it is good to have you here. If you will do me a favor this morning, on the side of your pews, there's an attendance book. If you wouldn't mind signing in for us, that uh, helps us know that you're here and that, that you're doing well. There's also a place on the bottom of that. If you need a prayer request or you desire a call for the pastor, that is another place that you can put on that slip that, hey, we need some prayer this week or we really uh, need you to call us. Uh, we will get back with you as soon as we can. But we do have a, a lot of things going on in the life of the church, especially this week, um, that, I, that I do want to tell you about and to, to tell you about a few things going on here. So tomorrow, though, the office is closed. Now, I'm saying the office is closed Tomorrow night, something huge is happening, right? Vacation Bible school starts tomorrow night. So the office is closed, but we do have Vacation Bible school. I know a lot of you folks are going to be there and uh, be excited to have your kids there participating in that, learning about Jesus this week. We're so excited um, about that, that that's all going on. Now, um, Abby wanted me to tell you, though, that tomorrow the online VBS registration is closed. Now, that does not mean that you cannot sign up for VBS. You still can, right, Pastor Abby? Yeah. So, what you can do is just bring the kids that you have there, and you can register them at the door, and it will just be fine, just like they registered online. So, you can't register online anymore, but you can just bring the kids to the door, and we'll welcome as many as uh, we can possibly take. So, we're really, really excited. VBS is going to be fun this week, isn't it? We're going to have a blast. So I'm excited about it. Now, I know one thing that's special that VBS is doing this week, um, they're collecting toiletries for Grand Central Station. And so, but they've asked us as adults if we could help in on that mission project to collect toiletries for Grand Central Station. Now, there is a list of the toiletries that are needed in your e-news, okay? They're also listed on the website somewhere. So um, if you want to get involved in that mission with the kids this week, um, we can bring toiletries up to the church and uh, spread God's love by helping people out at Grand Central Station, the people that they minister to. So we're really excited um, about all the awesome things that are going on at this church. But will you, will you stand with me this morning as we prepare ourselves for worship with our hearts and our souls and minds through our call to worship this morning? Today is Independence Day. We celebrate a time when our country declared its independence from foreign domination. But many things dominate our hearts. Fear, apathy, intolerance, and anger. May God hear our celebrations and also our cries for help. Remember how God has blessed you and be a blessing to others. Lord, Lord, keep, keep our, our hearts and, and minds, minds open to your word and, and your, your way. way. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, America the Beautiful, hymn 696.
for our affirmation of faith this morning with our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and and in Jesus Christ, his his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Again, happy 4th of July. Well, Independence Day alongside Thanksgiving Day are my very favorite holidays in the USA. I could spend the rest of my life eating what we eat on Thanksgiving and watching the fireworks. But it's not only the fireworks that give meaning to this day. There's something more profound that I want to share with you. I am really grateful. As I was writing my sermon and thinking and reflecting about the 4th of July, I couldn't help it by feeling extremely grateful to this country that opened the doors and embraced me and my family around 20 years ago. In 2002, I got a two year sabbatical to work on my master's in education. And I decided to come here and to bring the kids to learn English. So the plan was for us to go back at the end of that period of time. I completed my studies, all of us learned English, and I became a Texas educator. So the possibilities opened, and I was offered a teacher position and a work visa to become a permanent resident. After a long process of discernment, we decided to stay here, so we moved here. And life in Mexico was not perfect, but it was good. I had a good job. I was living among my own people, in my own culture, speaking my own language with other people. And when I came here, everything changed. I became a guest among new people. The title of this message is Becoming a Guest. And let us pray. Dear and almighty God, we thank you for this wonderful day that you let us come to this place, even online, either online or here, in presence. We are here to worship you, open our hearts and our ears to listen, to hear your message, that message that you have for us today. Be the Holy Spirit that is the one who guides us during this time together. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And our scripture for today comes from John 1, 1 to 18. And it says this way. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness didn't overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world didn't know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people didn't accept him. But to all who received him, who believe in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of the men, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you haven't read the Gospel of John, I would recommend you to read it. However, these 18 verses summarize the whole Gospel. The divine Savior came to earth to save us. Many rejected him, but for those who accepted him, who received him, he gave them the power to become children of God. And if we can say that this is the summary, we also can say that verse 14 is the main idea of the whole test. Especially when we read it from the version, the message, in which Eugene Peterson does a very good job. I like this version very much, especially that verse 14. Let me read it for you. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes. That one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generals inside and out, through from start to finish. If I read it again, what would you hear? I hear the word neighborhood. The word neighborhood is both simple and it is sophisticated. Because that means that any type, any kind of neighborhood in the world with God living among the people is a perfect neighborhood. 
He gives me a sense, an instant sense of intimacy and closeness with God. I think that is a very nice word choice, word choice. And it reminds me about my childhood neighborhood. I can hear the screaming, the noises, the laughter of all children playing in the street. All types of games. We were like a big family in which the neighbors took care of one another, especially us children. They sat and watched us play. They were doing life together, talking to one another. They even cooked our favorite goodies. It was good. I can almost recreate the smells in that street. And it makes me so happy to be reminded that God was in that neighborhood. I want to ask you something. Of the attributes of God, which one impresses you the most? I'm impressed by the power of God of being able to create all things out of nothing. And I am also impressed by the fact that God can be in all places at once. But what impresses me extremely is the love God shows us when God decided to come and live among us. I actually feel sorry for those people who didn't receive him when he came. And I feel sorry for those who haven't received him yet. In the Old Testament, God was a cosmic, eternal, unrealistic being. And God was not seen. God spoke to people. God spoke in Genesis when God created the world. God spoke to Adam in the cool of the day. God also spoke to Abraham, to Hagar, to Moses, to the prophets of Israel. God was the Word. The Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was fully God. And God is revealed in Jesus Christ. As Paul affirms in Philippians 2, 6 to 7, that Jesus was in the form of God, that Jesus was equal to God, that Jesus disregarded his divinity, his equality with God, and came all the way down. He humbled himself and took the form of a baby in a human being. God transcended all the liminal and the eternal realm and came to this broken, uncomfortable world to live with us to share in our humanity, to share in our pain, to share in our confusion, and to share in our celebrations. God is so amazing. God came to the earth to be with us. God became a guest. God moved into our neighborhood. If you were given that choice of being a guest 
or a host? What would you prefer to be? And I'm assuming that you will say a guest. Because you're thinking about being a guest in a nice resort while you're on vacation. But I argue that most of us, if not all, we like to be a host. When you invite someone to come into your house, you know about at what time that person is arriving at your door. You want to show your best hospitality? You pull out your best dining or your finest dining set? You prepare your favorite meal? You take care of every single detail. It gives you a little work, but you are in control. You are in your territory. And that gives you a sense of security. Certainly, you can be a very good host in your own house. But what about when you go to someone else's place? And furthermore, what about us Christians? What position do we take when we go to other place? And sometimes, even as guests, we try to impose our own agenda. I read about this story of a group of Christians that went to this small town in El Salvador on a mission. They had the best intentions. They wanted to be the best guest. So they took their own beds, their own food. And while they were there, they taught the indigenous people their songs in English. At the end of the activities, they had this beautiful worship where the mission leader preached a great sermon. And after the worship, they served hundreds of hamburgers and gave away T-shirts with the church name. When the leader was asked about their mission in the world, he said proudly that their mission was to bring Jesus to the towns where God is needed. And you are thinking probably, and what is wrong with this? And this is precisely the message of the mess, the point of the message. We are so accustomed, we are so attached to the role of a host that we may be overlooking the power and the beauty of being a guest. Even more critical, we may be missing the opportunity to respond to our mission to make disciples of all nations in the best way. Many believe that God is not in some places, that God is absent in some neighborhoods. So they carry Jesus as a puppet, as the missionary said. Mortimer Arias, a Hispanic theologian, says this. When the missionaries come to our lands, they bring not only the seed of the gospel, but their own plant of Christianity, flower pot included. Let us think, getting be more powerful for them to stay in the people's houses, eating 
pupusas, which is the most typical or the typical Salvadorian fruit. Then this take me, takes me to another question. What is our role in the world as Christians? To be hosts or guests? And from a theological point of view, I will argue that we all are strangers, that we all are guests. And for this, the theologian Amos Young says this, that the Christian condition of being aliens and strangers in this world means both that we are perpetually guests, first of God and then of others, and that we should adopt the postures appropriate to receiving hospitality even when we find ourselves as hosts. In Hebrews 12, says that we are never quite guiltless, never quite at home, always guests on the room. I understood this in a deeper way. When I completed my clinical pastoral education as a chaplain at Baylor Hospital in Dallas, I remember that I was ready to go and visit my first patient. And I was terrified, thinking that I was about to enter a stranger's space. But in reality, I was a host. When a person is admitted into the hospital, that person becomes vulnerable. First, that person is ill, and someone else is making decisions on her or his behalf. The patient follows the policies of the hospital, eating what is offered, even dressing the way he or she is told to. And the chaplain needs to be aware of these power dynamics between the one in the bed and the one who enters the room so the patient can feel comforted and loved. And I think we, as Christians, are challenged to do the same thing in our interactions in a daily life with others. Even when we are in the position of a host, we're invited to feel or to be in the position and the posture of a guest. Just like Jesus. Jesus is the exemplary recipient of hospitality. He is the guest by excellence. From Mary's womb to the day he ascended on, into heaven, he was dependent on the welcome of others. Just as he said on Luke 9:58. As the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He relied on the goodwill of many, staying in their homes, eating and drinking what was offered to him. Jesus knew that the only way for people to accept him was by living among them doing things with them, building relationships, gaining their trust by being generous. From inside out, 
And Jesus is inviting us to do the same. To be a guest as we interact with others. As we pay attention to the people. As we hear their stories in a respectful way with integrity. Never, ever ignoring their culture or overriding who they are. Amos Young affirms that God's mission is in a sense a stranger-centered theology that follows in the footsteps of Jesus. He became a stranger guest in a faraway country and he sat with the strangers of the society in of his time. He came to comfort the lost, the weak, the poor, the broken. That translated into our language in the present means practically all of us. All the ones that have been marginalized, like the patient in the hospital, the ill, the discriminated because of color, race, gender. All of us have been vulnerable at a time. So for you and the ones you love that have been vulnerable for any kind of loss, I want to reassure you that God has moved into your neighborhood, that God is with you, that God is in every single neighborhood in the world. Jesus came to be with us. At the beginning of Matthew, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. At the end of Matthew, Jesus promises to be with us to the end of all the times. And not only that, in Philippians 2, verse 8, Jesus humbled himself again to the point of death. And not only a simple death, death on the cross, to let us how much he loves us. God is in your neighborhood. God is with you. And I have seen God's glory. And I'm smiling because at this moment I'm thinking that in this very short period of time, we have seen God's glory. And I want, I want to talk about our ministry, Vecinos Ministries. Vecinos means neighbors. And our slogan means, or is, neighbors transforming one another on the love of Christ. We really want to help others. We are called to reach the most marginalized We want to help them in all areas, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, by walking with them. We want to see them standing and walking by walking with them. We are convinced that we are guests among guests. And that we transform one another while we interact together. Planting a church, creating a faith community out of nothing can be very tough and stressful. But we have seen the glory of God in so many ways. 
in so many ways. We have seen or received support coming from different directions. For instance, tomorrow we are going to launch our first summer camp. And we have 30 kids enrolled and 22 volunteers participating. And this is amazing because, as I said, we are building a plane as we fly. And not only we have the best group of volunteers coming to help us out. We have an army of angels coming to feed the kids twice a day. God is amazing. God is so good. And God has moved into the neighborhood, and so we do. And we have to. Because we want to look, we want to find out where God is already working on, what God is doing already so we can join God's mission. Because the one who have received Jesus Christ have received grace upon grace that overflows. So we are not only inspired, we are literally pushed to go into the community and let people know so they come and experience the fullness and the unfailing love of God through Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've now come to the time where we lift up our prayers. For these first couple of prayers, let us say together, praise be to God. This is for Vacation Bible School, for all of our all of our adult volunteers, all of our youth volunteers, all of the children who will be here in this place and space, for uh, all of our folks who are going to be here during the week to help prepare for VBS, and for all of those who have helped this past week decorate for VBS. We want to lift up a prayer this morning for them, for endurance, for excitement, and for God's love to shine and spread during our VBS week. We also want to lift up a prayer this morning for Los Vecinos Ministries as they are beginning their summer camps this week and will continue throughout the month of July. We want to pray for their volunteers, for their children, for the Los Vecinos community as well. May we all remember that these children are guests in our place this week, this month. May we do all that we can to help them know and experience the goodness and love of Christ. Let us say together, praise be to God. For these other couple of prayers, let us say together, Lord, hear our prayers. I saw in the news this week that um, COVID, while many of our numbers here in Sherman are low, Praise be to God. It is still running rampant in many areas throughout our world, specifically in Southeast Asia right now. There are doctors and uh, hospitals that are completely overrun right now with sick people, and not just in larger cities, but even in rural areas as well. They are experiencing right now what many of us were feeling shortly after the pandemic began here in our country. They are experiencing that now. May we pray for them and for their country. May we also pray for those who lost their lives in the building collapse that happened in Florida not too long ago. I learned this morning there are 122 people still 
lost or not confirmed, they can't find them. And there are over 20 people who have been confirmed who have passed away. May we pray for the community and state of Florida. May we, be, may we be in prayer for those families who have lost loved ones. And finally, today is uh, July 4th, Happy Independence Day to us all. As we sang in our song earlier, God bless America. May God continue to shed God's grace on this beautiful and wonderful country. And may God continue to mend our every flaw as we progress toward a more beautiful and bright future for all of us, no matter who we are. At this time, let us pray together the Independence Day prayer that you find either printed in your bulletin or on the screens in front of you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you rule all the peoples of the earth. Inspire the minds of all women and men to whom you have committed the responsibility of government and leadership in the nations of the world. Give to them the vision of truth and justice that by their counsel, all nations and peoples may work together. Give to the people of our country zeal for justice and strength of forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will, forgive our shortcomings as a nation, purify our hearts to see and love with truth. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We've come to the time where we uh, share our tithes and offerings, and I wanted to share something real quick with you. I, th I said, I remember saying this a, a couple of weeks ago, but I'm going to say it again because I get excited. So there was one time in children's worship, whenever we did this like a couple of years ago, where children asked me, why do we take up an offering? And I remember explaining to them, well, that's, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. And here's kind of something what I said, but I'm going to change it a little bit for all of us here today. Whenever we look at the world around us, we can see that God has given us so much. When we look at our families, our friends, the people in our lives, when we look at our homes and the places in which we work and those who have influenced us and made us the people that we are, whenever we step into a building like this or whenever we worship from home, whenever we feel God's calling on our hearts, these are moments where we realize that God has given us so much. It only makes sense to give a little bit back to God. God has given us so many gifts. What if we gave some of our gifts back to God so that others may experience and know God's goodness just as we have? Many of the gifts that uh, you have given or will continue to give will continue to bless ministries as part of the greater Sherman area here within the walls of the church as well, things like Grand Central Station, Family Promise, Vacation Bible School, Los Vecinos Ministries, Music Ministries, Online Worship, all of the ways in which there are people continuing to experience God's goodness and love. This morning we pray that those gifts that you are giving and will continue to give We'll continue to bless the ministries here at First Methodist Sherman, and we thank you so much for the ways in which you continue to show and live out the gift of generosity here in this place today and always. You can find giving links on the link in the comments of Facebook, and we also have bowls up here and in the back for your tithes and offerings, and you can visit those spots at any point during the following song.
One of the reasons I love being a United Methodist or a Methodist is that our communion table is what we call an open communion table. That means that all are welcome to participate in this holy and sacred meal of grace. Now, why is that? It's because Christ welcomed all people to his table. This is not a United Methodist table. This is Christ's table, a place where all are welcome. There are no barriers. There are no roadblocks for participating in this meal, but only pathways for you to experience the real presence of Jesus Christ in your life. So in saying that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another here today. As we say, God God of of celebrations celebrations and and sorrows, sorrows. we We wave wave the the flag flag this weekend weekend, and our our hearts hearts beat beat with pride at the the stirring sounds of the bands. bands. Fireworks emblazon the skies, and families gather for celebrations. But in too many places, there is little to celebrate. Our spirits ache for the people both far and near who suffer and struggle just to have the basic necessities of life while we live in abundance. Forgive us when our celebrations cloud the needs of others. It is important for us to celebrate but we must must never never forget forget that that you you have given given us a ministry and mission to perform here and now. Help us us be mindful mindful of the many ways in which we can reach out to others by our attitudes and our actions. May we be for those who would bring bring hope, hope, comfort, comfort, healing, and and peace. peace. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory Glory to to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and covering outside to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you will save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord, as Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word, and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance. 
of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. In union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So God, we ask you today to pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of the gifts of bread and fruit of the vine and make for them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and with your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. If you'll take your elements here, and we'll pull off the first layer of film here and get the wafer out. My friends, this is the body of Christ, broken for each and every one of you. The blood of Christ has been shed for you. Will you join me as we say together the prayer following the sacrament, which is printed in your bulletins or on the screens in front of you? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us be standing for our closing hymn, This Is My Song, hymn 437.
Now, receive this benediction. I am happy to be reminded that God was in my childhood neighborhood. And I want to reassure you that God has moved into your neighborhood, that God is in every single neighborhood in this world. Receive the hospitality of Jesus Christ and become a guest and go and show the glory of God to others so they can come and feel the unfailing love of God. Go in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.